I'd like to explain to you how comedy works. Um, first there's a setup, and then there's a punchline. Let me explain. The setup is when a comedian will use his talents and resources to seize any opportunity to ensure that you, the audience, are moving in the same direction. The punchline occurs when he changes that direction in a way you're not expecting. When you catch on to this change, you've received the punchline. The results are revelation, fulfillment, and joy expressed through laughter. <laughs> Let me give you an example. A few summers ago, I took my uh, family on vacation to Mexico. Um, the first two days were rough because the people there kept calling me a Negro. Uh, the third day, I realized they were saying amigo, and it was all cool. <laughs> that was cool, so. Did you see what just happened right there? <laughs> when I was a kid, I used to struggle uh, with my reading. Like, I couldn't sound a word out phonetically. It just didn't work. Uh, so now, looking back at it, I realized I developed like seven different ways to look at a word to determine what the word was. Look at the, the font size, the color, the positioning, what's in front of it, what's behind it, how people responded to it. I got really good at looking at words differently. In fact, it's the primary place where I pull my comedy from. So that very thing from my past, it looked like it was a setback, looked like it was some sort of handicap. Turns out, uh, I'm actually able to use it for what I'm called to do now. So I'm able to find comedy in a bunch of different places as a result of embracing what seemed like it was a handicap from my past. I noticed even what people say sometimes. Have you ever heard the phrase, boy, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall? Every time I hear that, I walk up to the person and I say, and then what? No, 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 you want to be a fly on the walls, so you can hear the information that was in the room. Well, I've done the research. Um, flies don't have ears. Yeah, you would be just as ignorant as you currently are. But you would be a fly. Nobody even listens to a fly. I mean, let's say you're a fly that can read lips. What are you going to do with the information? And you got two days to live. You're making bad choices. <laughs> so there's a club in Los Angeles. When I moved to Los Angeles and I was brand new in comedy, there's a club there that, uh, uh, it's, it's like the best club in the country. It's called the Comedy and Magic Club. It's actually in Hermosa Beach. This club is extremely hard for a comedian to get into. The way I got into this club is a guy named George Wallace saw me when I lived in New York. He knew I was funny and clean. So when I moved to Los Angeles, he took me to the Kanye Magic Club. Now he couldn't get me on stage because it's way too prestigious of a club. They have to know who you are. So, so he got me into the green room. I'm in the green room and suddenly, brand new in town, and I find myself in the green room with some soldiers in comedy. There's um, George Wallace, Gary Shanley, Jay Leno. I'm brand new in town. And at the time, a football player got hit in the eye uh, with a flag and um, he lost his vision one eye and he was suing the league for $400 million. Now all of these guys are helping Leno on that joke subject for the monologue for the Tonight Show on NBC. I ain't saying nothing. I'm just happy to be in the room sharing french fries with these dudes. <laughs> but your gift will make room for you. So then they got quiet and they all looked at me and I'm thinking, oh snap, this is an opportunity. So I was like, all right, let me see if I got this right. He got hit in the eye with a flag, he lost his vision in one eye and he's suing the league for 400 million million dollars. Oh. He not gonna see half of it. <laughs> so here's the thing, how did I get that joke that fast under that much pressure? The truth is it wasn't as much pressure as you might think because I had been practicing since I was a child in the form of a kid who was having a hard time reading. I was practicing just like you've probably been practicing. You just didn't know you were practicing. I'm here to let you know you've been practicing. And for a lot of you guys, it's game time. It's game time. Before I bounce, bounce means to vacate the premises. <laughs> I'd like to explain to you how life works, at least from a comedian's perspective. First there's a setup, and then there's a punchline. Your setup is your talents, your resources, and your opportunities. And most of the time, we use our setup to ensure that the people around us are moving in a direction that serves us which means the punchline occurs when you change that direction in a way they're not expecting. You actually use your setup for other people. The results are the same yet multiplied. Revelation, fulfillment, and joy, but it's not just for the one receiving your punchline. It is absolutely for you as you deliver the punchline. 
In fact, if I ask the question to everyone here, everyone watching, if I ask you this question, um, how many people here know what your setup is? Every one of you would be able to tell me. Because your setup is the fact that you have a house, a car, you've been married, you went to school. Your setup is about what you've received. But what if I ask the question, what is your punchline? Because your punchline is about what you're called to deliver. And if you only know your setup and not your punchline, you'll make the mistake of trying to add more setup. If I could just get another degree, if I could just get married, if I could just lose weight. But what you really need is to know your punchline. Again, because to know your setup and not your punchline is an uncomfortable place to live. What about your story? You've been living it your entire life and if all you know is the setup and not the punchline, you are living in an uncomfortable place. And please be clear, just like when I had a hard time reading as a child, your setbacks are part of your setup so you can deliver the punchline you're called to deliver. Much like a slingshot, the further you've been set back, the further you're going to reach. But what are you gonna aim for? Everyone has a setup and everyone has a punchline. You need to find your punchline and deliver it. I'm Michael Jr. I love you. Thank you.